Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of War of the Spark. Without further ado, let's get back into the draft. We've got a Chandra's Triumph here, which is probably the pack one pick one. Nice, efficient, instant speed removal. There's not too much else going on in the pack. There is an Angrath, I guess, which has been pretty impressive in our last deck. It is two 2-2 two, two zombies at worst, thanks to the double amass. I guess it would be like a single 4-4 four, four if they don't kill the first one, so that's pretty solid too. Um, but it is slightly... I guess it's just as flexible. It might be more flexible, actually, since it goes into black or red. We don't have to be both colors. Yeah, those are the two cards really competing. Outside of these two, there's a Trusted Pegasus, probably for third place. But a pretty firm third behind these two. I guess thanks to the hybrid mana cost, we can actually start with Angrath here. Play that if we're in black or red. Just a solid way to get multiple creatures off of the one card or one really beefy zombie army. For pick number two, we've got Jaya's Greeting to stick to red or Spark Harvest to stick to black. Either way, since this is a hybrid mana cost and both of those are exceptional removal spells, Instant speed and three damage scry one, or sorcery speed, a little bit more mana, but you can kill anything with it, including planeswalkers. And when this is a format that has a planeswalker in every pack, that added flexibility of shooting planeswalkers does give Spark Harvest the slight edge for me here. So we'll take that moving on to pick three. Pick number three, Callous Dismissal out of blue is a very good card, but Tybalt's Rager in red is also pretty nice, and if we manage to go black-red, that makes Angrath super, super easy to cast. We also did see a bunch of pretty solid red in the last pick, so if we keep getting past decent red, that'll be good, but it's really early in the draft to tell. We're literally on pick three. Sahili can also be pretty solid. Every time you cast a non-creature, you're getting a 1-1 one -one Servo, and you can have that artifact become a copy of any other artifact or creature you control so you can like buff it up make it your biggest creature for a little bit it's pretty cute i think it really is sahili rager or dismissal here and thanks to the the red hybrid cost of angrath here i think i will take tybalt's rager lean towards that get this angrath to be as easy to cast as possible rather than having to be double black in a, a blue black deck or anything like that for pick four, we've got an Honor the God Pharaoh out of red, which is a solid way to get some card draw in your deck while still keeping your creature count high thanks to the amass mechanic, but there's also decent removal with Liliana's Triumph. Just instant speed making your opponent sack a creature. I think the strongest mechanic in the set by quite a bit is amass, so there's going to be a lot of tokens running around. It's going to be a lot of board states with multiple creatures. There are a lot of positions where Liliana's Triumph is just not going to be that great because you're just going to get them to sack their 1-1 army that they amassed off something like Honor the God Pharaoh, potentially. So we'll take the Honor over that. Pick number five. None of these cards are super exciting, so I guess we can try out the Devouring Hellion here, which makes a bit of sense for Rakdos. This is the kind of sacrifice archetype. If we can get some... Devil tokens off a of Tybalt or something if we manage to draft that and sack an army or something alongside. This can be pretty big, but I'm not a huge fan of it. There's just really nothing else in this pack. Aid the Fallen has gone down quite a bit in my pick order pretty quickly. I think it was a pretty big underperformer last time. There's just too many good cards in this format that are non-creature ways to create creature tokens. Cards like Honor the God Pharaoh, that's technically a sorcery taking up your creature slots, so that does make it so uh, the Aid the Fallen is, is harder to get triggering consistently. Pick 6, I think Callous Dismissal is an incredible card, bouncing something and amassing an army, but I also think going full-on blue-red all instant sorceries is really fun with Invade the City. That is a much more all-in kind of pick here, whereas the Callous Dismissal is going to be good if we head into blue, just period, right? The Invade the City is only if we head into blue and we manage to take a ton of instant sorceries. Yeah, I mean, I think we do have to dismissal over Invade the City, but I really want to draft an Invade the City deck at least once this return trip. So hopefully we can get there at some point. Pick seven, this pack's all very filler. I'll go ahead and just rare draft a Planeswalker. 
Pick eight now. Uh, Grim Initiate is pretty solid for a sacrifice deck, but No Escape is pretty awesome uh, interaction as a very good counterspell against so many powerful cards in the set, so I'll take the No Escape still, I think. Now that we are potentially pushing towards blue with Callus Dismissal, because we haven't seen great black cards go late, so I think we are more likely heading into blue-red here, wanting more interaction like No Escape uh, over like red-black sacrifice cards more of the blue-red spells direction. Okay, uh, pick nine. We wield the Trusted Pegasus, which I think was one of the best cards in this pack already, so that does show that white is very open. I don't think any white cards were taken out of this pack. My memory's not perfect, but yeah, now there's a Martyr of the Cause, or Martyr for the Cause. So we'll open up this white backup plan if everything else gets cut off. Yeah, another trusted Pegasus. White is definitely open. Another marcher for the cause. Okay. We should definitely keep that in mind as an open color to pivot onto. Grab a an amass card there. All right, pack two, pick number one. What do we have here? We've got the Mayhem Devil for Rakdos Sacrifice. We're going to be contested out of black. We know that for sure. But if you have like the great signpost uncommon for that deck, it's still pretty dang tempting. Pyro Helix is more likely to make the cut because we get to play it in any red deck here, be it red, blue, red, black, or red, white. So that's probably the safest pick, but this is the highest upside. I don't think this rare is actually that good. Your opponent gets to keep the best creature or planeswalker on their board. You get to keep the best creature or planeswalker on your board, but then neither of you can play a creature or planeswalker until the end of your next turn. So you pass to them, they cast nothing, they pass to you, you cast nothing, you pass to them again. They're the first player that gets to start putting more stuff on the board. So it's a pretty big downside there. I'm just going to take the Pyro Helix here. Well, 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 that is really disappointing because I think we kind of have to push black if we get a Dreadhorde Invasion rare. Yeah, now I kind of wish I took the Mayhem Devil because I think somebody else is definitely going to take it. But there, I mean, there's a Narset out of the blue as well, which is great for blue-red spells focused on running a lot of non-creatures. That's a great way to dig or some more great non-creature spells. There's also a Callus Dismissal we could wheel. I think Dreadhorde Invasion is just like the Stone Cold Nuts, though, for Red Black Amass. Red Black Sack as well. This might be wrong, but I, I think Black is just contested enough. We can still take Narset here, get another Narset, or alternatively, Try to go blue-white because we know that white is super open and we can take Elite Guard Mage, which is an excellent, excellent card. Just a great enter the battlefield effect there. Could be a thing. I mean, maybe white's open enough we get to take a Narset and wheel the Guard Mage. We'll see. There's a pick four toll of the invasion, so we would be still getting some playable black spells. Uh, Tamiyo's Epiphany is excellent card draw, really digs for your powerhouse bombs, which this format has quite a few of. It's also decent white cards like Law Rune Enforcer to slow things down, or Gideon's Triumph to kill an attacking creature, but I think we save all the white spells for later since they are the most likely to wheel in this draft pod. A second Mayhem Devil? I mean, this time there's nothing going into our potential blue-white deck, so I'll take it. Um, but I don't think any of that kind of stuff is going to come back here. Uh, now Gideon's Triumph is fine removal. If we go to white. Now Pouncing Leagues. First Striking Attacker is fine if we go to white. The uh, Prophet is pretty solid in red as well if you have a really non-creature spell heavy deck. But if I'm reading this pod correctly at all, I think we're going to end up in Azorius here getting past... A pick 9 or pick 10 guard mage. 
We are coming off the heels of murders at Karlov Manor, so people might have that on the mind, and they might be trying to play five color decks. Really don't recommend that in this set, but if somebody is trying to do that in this draft pod, then that guard mage is potentially a goner. Which would be pretty disappointing. Alright, pick eight. Uh, probably not playing any of these, but there's a slight possibility we do end up Boros. We've got a lot of red spells, a lot of white spells. Legionnaire would be fine there. Uh, here's a War Screecher. I've already got Double Martyr. We take the Screecher for a Flyer. I think we're about to see the pack that Guard Mage was in sometime soon. Curve looks really good, whatever we end up playing, so I don't think I need to sort by Curve. I'm just going to make stacks on, based on the colors here. I think we're like equally tied to every color right now. We can really go anywhere. I mean, we're pretty close. Most tied to white over anything else. I uh, already got a play set of all this stuff, so we take something that could maybe make the cut, like Assault Team or Crunch. Both are pretty filler. Crunch is a solid turn 3 play if you have a lot of 2-drops in your deck. Go for that. Interesting. Well, did misread the draft pot a little bit here. Or somebody's on the 5-color deck, which they really are probably not going to succeed with. But we get another 10th District Legionnaire, which means instead we can just lock in on Boros, which is fine too. Get another Gideon's Triumph. Um, it's a pretty defensive removal spell, so I'd rather just take the Law Rune Enforcer because Red White is going to be very aggressive in this set, as you can see by the signpost Uncommon Two Mana Two Two Haste that wants you to play a bunch of combat tricks. All right, there's another playable creature at two mana. Okay, well we opened up a uh, Red White Uncommon, but it sucks. A uh, heartwarming redemption. Basically unplayable. Really bad wheel effect. Take Defiant Strike because we have two copies of 10th District Legionnaire. Normally the card wouldn't be very exciting at all. But with two Legionnaires, it's okay. I don't think anyone else should be interested in this card at all. So this should be much more likely to wheel than the Honor the God Pharaoh, which is also just a great card up front. So I think we should take Honor the God Pharaoh actually over the strike. Maybe even the Turd Ogre. Just as some beef to top off the curve. Make sure that we have something big to jump in the sky with the Pegasus. Yeah, Ogre or Honor here over Strike seems good. I'll take the Honor still. But I do think Ogre would not be bad in this deck. Okay. Well, this pack looks pretty bad for us. Just a 2 mana 2-2. Two -two. I guess we would play infinite copies of those. Ah, this would have been the pod. We could add double invade the city. And a Sahili or two. Since this invade is in the same pack as the Sahili, it would have been double invade and one Sahili, or double Sahili and one invade. Uh, even if we forced blue-red, but either of those is a really nice deck. Alright, pack three, pick three. No combat tricky things. There's a Grim Initiate, which is fine, but I think Tybalt's Rager is a bit better. Domri, I don't think we can really splash in this deck. Italian solid when you're curving out. Conjurant is decent anywhere on the curve. Rally of Wings doesn't target anybody, but it's good with double Pegasus. Untap both the creatures, the Pegasus and whatever that jump to the sky and buff them up. It's kind of interesting. This should probably wheel though. Conjurant just definitely won't because of the colorless mana cost. Any deck could run an X mana XX perfectly fine. Well, there's another rally. Not seeing any of the defiant strikes that we would really need to get the Legionnaires running, sadly. But Pyro Helix is pretty cute with them. If we have both on board, we could shoot each for one damage and get a plus one plus one counter on both. Pretty cute. I'm going to take a rally here. Try to do Pegasus combo things. Pick six. Uh, Heartfire is a pretty good finisher for an aggressive deck, doing the final four damage to our opponent for only two mana, but it's also a decent removal spell when you have a lot of 1-1 one -one tokens uh, sitting around potentially with cards like Honor the God Pharaoh. Or if you have like a Planeswalker that doesn't have a plus ability that's made it all the way down to one loyalty, so you're just sitting there not doing much. 
And we do need more non-creatures over creatures at this point in the draft. All right, pick seven is unplayable. Yeah, that's not worth a card, even if it's targeting a Legionnaire. This Gideon Sacrifice thing. Unfortunate. Nothing here either. This Martyr is strictly better than Assailant. I also still want to cut a Charmed Stray, though, so we take Martyr over Charmed Stray. There's the Defiant Strike back, where we get to cut the Assailant now. Nobody's doing the invade the city thing. Disappointing. Alright, I like Battalion here. This could be a 16 land deck. We just run the Battalion over the 17th land and call it a deck here. All right, here's the final deck list for today. We're on a crisp little Boros aggro deck. We have tons of cheap creatures, just an absolute plethora of two mana creatures to curve out with. And we can curve into the trusted Pegasus here to send them into the sky. We can curve into Makeshift Battalion to get some plus one plus one counters because we'll be attacking with a ton of creatures. There's so many creatures in this deck that Cronch is really consistent as an attacker as well. So we're just trying to beat our opponents down uh, while they might be dirtling around with mana and getting to uh, their higher mana bombs and stuff like that. Hopefully we can play a cheaper, quicker, more streamlined deck and just bash our opponent for lethal before anything crazy happens. Super simple deck here. Got a bit of removal to help out. Pyrohelix, Heartfire, that kind of stuff to clear a path. We've got the Menace to everybody with Angrath that can help out. And we have one combat trick to go with the double Legionnaire. It's a little awkward, but... They're still nice little hasting threats, so should be pretty fun, pretty powerful deck. Definitely something a bit different this time around. We'll see how it plays out for us as we head into the gameplay. Here we are against Mebo for game one, fellow streamer. They're going to start with a forest turn one, so they're on some kind of green deck. We're just going to try to trusted Pegasus curve out as you do. Cronch Wrangler for the first play would love to go ahead and see... A Chandra's Pyre Helix or something here. That would be perfect against the one toughness card. So they're on green-blue, which is about ramping into big creatures, which Cronch Wrangler really enjoys getting plus one, plus one counters with. Ashiok. Okay, so they're going to try to mill us out here, potentially. Which is fine, I think. I think the game's probably going to go fast enough that mill's not going to be a huge thing. Trade Martyr for the Wrangler. I don't hate that. And are we convinced about our damage enough to go face instead of go Ashiok? Could be sketchy, but I kind of think we, we are. Alright, they're going to trade either way, so it doesn't really matter. Um... I have nothing to jump into the sky with the Pegasus, but I'm still going to drop the Pegasus for now. Okay, there's the Ashiok Mill again. Fifteen more cards. If they proliferate at all, we could have a huge problem. Oh, of course, they've got the Reach creature. That's pretty frustrating. Um, well, we can Gideon's Triumph it. I guess we are on Gideon's Triumph here. It doesn't really matter what we attack, they're always going to block here. Alright. Seventeen cards left. Still looking fine, even if Ashiok sticks around. The problem is just if they get proliferated onto. Face, Ashiok, Rally. 
Excellent. Here's another Pegasus. Roll from there. The Pegasuses are looking kind of awkward here. Just a 2-2 flyer with no text, because I don't have an on-flyer right now. But there's one. Nice little army. Martyr for the Cause is an excellent chumper for the Conjurance. Chump and buff our army at the same time. I mean, we can send in with pretty much everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eh, it's not going to be lethal anyway. Let's just block here. Whittle down the Conjurant and buff up the army. Another Conjurant, all right. Another Honor the God Pharaoh. That's pretty sweet for the future, but I'm perfectly happy to just go big here. Super unblockable board. We definitely win this race. They're down to six. We're at 20. They can hit us for seven damage. Looks like they have a really good proliferate deck. They're just not drawing their proliferate cards. Like, they've got tons of counters on the board and everything. Um, they just don't have the cards to proliferate onto those countered up things. Alright, so do I honor or screecher here? I think I honor for more cards. Find a battalion, sure. Another Ashiok. Not quite gonna mill us. Gets actually, actually close though. Five cards in library, but we do find the kill one turn fast enough. If we did not kill them on this swing, we would draw a card, be at four in library, and then Ashiok could mill us out. Although I suppose we have more than a big enough board state to kill Ashiok in one swing and have, you know, four more attacks to try to kill them with, so. That was a threateningly small library, though, down to five cards there. We do find a victory in the end, though. Really solid showing from our deck. Pretty happy to see the just red-white flyers all over strat pans out for us for round number one. Here we are now for game two. On the play, that feels great. Martyr into Pegasus to get four damage in the sky when we send in that Pegasus. And we've got the Angrath for flying and menace to the whole board. Another pretty spicy start. Uh, unfortunate to hit the one drop on turn two so it doesn't fit into the curve here, but still a spicy card. And our opponent is on a slower deck, which is both a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because we get to cash in our early damage here for sure. It's a bad thing because slower deck with some great fixing can find a lot of powerful bombs that can immediately swing the game back in their favor in this format. For now, Soren's Thirst is going to buy them quite a bit of time. Killing the Pegasus and gaining them two life as well. Let's get the Angrath going. What one green mana instant is there? Do they have a giant growth in their hand, or do they just like playing in full control mode? Some of these mythic players are weird like that. Does mythic 280. Paradise Druid for some mana ramp from them. Really good mana ramp too, because it's a mana dork that you can't even kill with removal until it's already tapped itself for some mana. So that's pretty uh, annoying. Wait, we do this so I can have either color that I need up. War Screecher, that feels better to cast than the Law Rune Enforcer. They're down to 11 already, and here's a Flyer. There's Arlen, that is huge. 
Luckily, it's only one 3-3 three, three blocker right now, so we hit for five, six, seven, eight guaranteed currently. Eight, nine, ten. Is there any way to get one more damage in? I don't think there is. This Angrath Menace is insane. Just uh, put you to one. Good luck. Have fun. Guild Globe, four mana available to them now. They haven't played land for turn, they could have five. But it's not going to be enough, just some really aggressive stuff from Boros strikes again, and we are 2-0, and o, heading into game number three. Alright, here we are for game three, no red source in the hand, but double martyr to start things off with triumph for removal. I will keep here, obviously really hoping for the red source. Perfect draw is perfect. Here's Martyr for the Cause to start things off. Playing against a green deck. Green blue again. Proliferate plus and plus one counter kind of archetype. I think we're supposed to send in here and hope that they don't really want the trade yet. We need to try to cash in as much damage as possible throughout this game. Excellent. That might have been a little bold, because we will be disappointed if this Crunch cannot attack next turn. All right, it will be able to attack next turn, but it means we'll have to chump attack with Martyr, since they did proliferate. Um, so probably not worth it. Pegasus Crunch is quite the combo. We could set that up. I mean, I guess since I have Triumph here, we can just... Send both in, holding up Triumph, and just play a two-drop alongside that. That seems perfectly fine. Alright, yeah, sure. And Tybalt's Rager is like endless combat tricks on a stick. It just buffs itself up to be however big it needs to be. Crunch Wrangler. Does not do a lot of excellent blocking right now. Alright, that's already going to trade whether or not I buff it, so we just let it happen and shoot the face. I think they're low enough here. Um, it's technically a little more damage to go Rage or Martyr, even if they can get blocked a little better. They can't block all of these creatures. Yeah, that's going to block our 4-3, and they're going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now I can even just Pyro Helix finish off the Ceratok. Is that better than playing Pegasus? 4 life? Eh. I think it's better to play Pegasus because the flexibility of just shooting them in the face for two is pretty big, especially with Rager on board to shoot them for one more. They're essentially at one life now because Rager dying puts them to three. Pyrohelix to, pay to face puts them to one. So if we can just hold on to the Pyrohelix, we are pretty dramatically reducing their life total. And dropping the Pegasus is also just giving us an evasive lethal on board, which is pretty big. It's a Mowu on the ground. And a Paradise Druid, they're just dead. We don't even have to cast Pyro Helix. Excellent stuff from Trusted Pegasus yet again. And there's the concession from our opponents, and we are now 3 and 0, oh, guaranteed at least a 50 50 average run out of this deck uh, as we head into round 4. Here we are for game four. We're on the draw, but that's not going to stop us from trying to be the aggressor in the matchup with three two-mana creatures, the great menace to the whole board finisher of Angrath. Excellent cheap removal with Pyro Helix. 
The Pyrohelix particularly exciting here, because if they play a one toughness card, we get to Pyrohelix that and our Legionnaire to buff it. Or we could Pyrohelix both of our Legionnaires, because we hit the Wombo combo. Shoot our own Legionnaires, <laughs> both of them with one Helix. Oh, that would be so funny. But our opponent does feel the need to hold up blocks here, which is awkward for us. That means we're not set up to really get in. We'll just play a Battalion and pass. Even with Pyro Helix, we can't do much here, because while targeting our Legionnaire is going to put a counter on it, it is also going to shoot it for a damage, which will make it still die to, uh, to either of those. All right, fourth mana is pretty beautiful. We can get Menace off of Angrath, or... We can cast a creature and hold up a Pyro Helix, or we can cast two creatures. Let's go for the double creature here. Try to set up the very spicy Legionnaire Pyro Helix turn. Get a Battalion trigger set up. We've kind of met our match here. No, well, we've lost. I'm going to say we've met our match here playing against somebody that is actually also pretty aggressive. All right, hold on, hold on. Okay, that doesn't actually work. You don't need to hold on. They get to pick what they sacrifice, and they're going to block with more creatures than just got Eternal Oketra. So 3-6 double strike. If I ever kill it, it goes back into their deck, and if they cast any more creatures, they get a 4-4 four, four every time. Hey, yikes. Ingrath for Menace. Get some zombies. Pass. Just try to go for a massive attack next turn or something. Try to like barely outrace the Oketra. Seems like the only shot. Mm, at least I didn't have any more creatures to play after the Oketra. All right. I don't know exactly what's going to happen here, but maths for blockers on this one. Something's going to happen. Alright, so Battalion's going to die to first strike damage. Okay, does Pyrolyx even look that good here? Or do we want to just play a Bouncing Lynx? This 1-2 Rager? I can kill... I can't kill a rising populace, can I? Whenever another creature plains worker, you control dies. Okay, I can kill the populace, because I'm not going to kill anything else of theirs. Yeah, sure, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can make it 12 damage if I pyro helix, but I could also just play a pouncing leak post-combat, save the pyro helix. Which feels solid, too. I think we do that... Oh, yeah, they can War Screecher, sure. Alright, well, if they don't kill Angrath, they're pretty dead, so one of their creatures is going to be tapped here, and they're going to have one less blocker. And then we're going to see what Pyrohelix can do for us, damage-wise. No! That's the nail in the coffin. If they didn't hit a creature, they go block, 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 take six. I guess they're still not dead if they didn't hit a creature. But hitting a creature is just disastrous with Oketra. Rally of Wings is completely useless right now. It still untaps our board, but not really doing anything. Oh, the Oketra 4-4s four are Vigilance, too. All right, well... Tried pretty hard. Still got them to eight. We could have got them to uh, to six if I had Pyro Helix to the Legionnaires, but we still would have gotten absolutely roadblocked by Oketra top decking two creatures here. So I don't think it really matters. 
still a tiny bit of time. If we draw into a single Charmed Pegasus, we can still kill them. But we won't. Oops. Do this for four. Like, a single Charmed Pegasus with Rally of Wings stacks in a bunch of damage that they're not expecting. Hit two Charm Strays in a row as well, so they get the counter. Cute. Yeah, I mean, we could still stick it out here, but I'm over it. Really just Oketra's game. Without the Oketra, I think we had that one super in the bag. Or alternatively, we had found a Pegasus. But three and one, heading into game five. Here we are for game five on the draw, unfortunately, but we do have a solid curve, especially if we hit some lands. Is it time for a one mana one one Ugin's Conjurant? I don't think so. I did consider it. There's Might, turn two from our opponents. Uh oh, that's not a land. I still think I martyr first over Worse Reacher. We have Angrath for two different permanents with counters on them and Conjurant for another one. So we could get some proliferate value pretty quick here. Uh oh. Well, we have failed to find a land for our first two draws. Let's see about draw three. Guild Globe, yeah, Guild Globe and Prismite. They've got perfect mana for any bombs they might be splashing in. Especially off double Guild Globe with the Prismite. Well. This is quickly turning into a death sentence. Go, worse creature. Boop them. We're the aggro deck. We'll show them. Just hold up Gideon's Triumph, I guess. Yeah. It's just how it is sometimes. Just run into a couple God Eternals in a row, which you can't even kill. They just go right back into the deck to get recast in a couple turns. That is really good with... Uh, The guild globes as well, because they get the card draw right when they hit the board anyway. Alright, yeah, I mean... If I play exclusively flyers, I could still randomly win off of Rally. Especially with a trusted Pegasus in hand, but... We need to hit land, 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 like right now. To be able to have the mana to play enough creatures to provide that much damage. Because we need to outrace a 5-6 Menace, which is just not happening right now. Premium uncommon there with the Eternal Sky Lord. And unfortunately clutters up the sky even more.
The Sky Lord is just one of those great two for one kind of creatures. It's a 3 3 plus a 2 2 flyer. We have 14 damage on board if they don't block anybody, which is still not lethal. And there's an Arlen too. Alright. We're outie. That's 3 and 2. Incredible 3-0 start. Just gets 180'd quick by some bomb mythics and some mana screw in the second game too. Here we are now for game 6. On the play again with two hasty legionnaires to get started. See if we can turn our luck around here after those last couple games. No God Eternal opponent. Don't do it to us, John Doe. Well. Also slightly annoying to see you play a 1-1 one -one that can trump twice. Beyond one of the most aggressive colors being in red. Pyro Helix the Legionary. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hit us for one. Their land. Um, we can go for mana efficiency here. Honor into both Legionnaire and Rager next turn. Don't hate that. Because we still get the burst damage out of the haste next turn. Even if it is pretty instinctual to just slam down the haste immediately every time. Like, it still has haste if we cast it next turn. Still getting more damage out of it than a summoning sick play. However, not if we don't hit uh, land 5, because I discarded land 4. Um, yeah, let's just haste her it out. Boom, down to 15. Maybe should have ditched Rally. We didn't have any flyers at the time, and we have not drawn into a Pegasus to make it look any better. I probably should have ditched Rally. Keep the land. Another Pyro Helix. Super rude. Okay, Pegasus is probably the best draw on the deck. It's a three mana play. It's also our best play with Rally in hand. Can we hit land five? Land four on board, but again, we ditched land four. God, what? Most open red draft pod ever. Show me one more removal spell. I'm ready to call it 3-3. Three, three. Load up another draft. Alright, it's not removal, but it's just as annoying being a reach creature. Luckily, Gideon's Triumph puts in a lot of work for us here. So we're going to Triumph and play a creature. I'm even happier if they don't block. I do have the trick here, so it would not be the dumbest decision ever for my opponent to not block. But I would be happier, because then I just get to play more threats. With my mana to really set up the rally kill next turn. Eh. Set up the martyr. Buff the army when that thing dies. We don't have enough red mana to make Rager look that good with its built-in fire breathing. It's a Neheb on the ground. Let's go, Pegasus! Kill them with Rally next turn. Unless they kill my Pegasus, then I'll be very sad. But at that point, I think they'll have earned it. This will be the fourth removal spell. Very early. Send in the Heb, which is going to get in, which is going to let them discard any number of cards, draw that many cards, get that much red mana. 
so they can cast some expensive stuff here. Ditch only two cards, draw two and get two mana. I wouldn't have been surprised to see that just discard six, draw six, get six mana. All right, Wrangler on the ground. Cyclops on the ground? All right, well, you're dead. You are dead, my friend. Let's go. Wee. All right, I do not think I played that one out correctly. I think the only line that was particularly incorrect was the discard decision there. Um, but I think the game would have been much safer and even potentially better if I had discarded the rally early. Obviously, it did find us lethal in the end, but had we hit our fourth land earlier instead of missing it for a couple turns because I ditched the fourth land, we also would have just curved out more aggressively and probably stacked up enough damage to still have killed them around the same time. Um, and that way we wouldn't have been at the risk of just having a rally in hand without drawing into two Pegasuses. Like, that was super lucky that we hit both Pegasus. We hit the first one, which got killed, and then Rally was useless again, and then we hit the second one to make sure it was still useful. So I don't think my discard decision was correct there, but we still got there with uh, just sweet stuff from our deck and some poor draws from our opponent's deck on that one for sure. Definitely some mana screw on that side of the table as well. We are now at 1,400 gems and three packs. That's a four-win run or better. We are guaranteed at least breaking even with a positive win rate out of this draft. Here we are for round seven. We are four and two right now. We have the Legionnaire Pyrohelix combo again. Will we do it this time? Will we shoot both of our own Legionnaires? It would be very funny. And it would let me scry two, which might matter with the amount of lands we have currently. Already at five mana. That's actually a bit flooded for this deck. I don't think we have a five mana spell in here. Yeah, four is the top of our curve. Transmutation. 1-1, one, one, and it loses all of its text. Well, so much for pyrohelixing it. We're not going to shoot our own 1-1. One, one. Well, let's play another Legionnaire. Maybe we can pyrohelix this one and one of their blockers. Don't toll me. Okay, mana geode is not a toll of the invasion. So our hand is unmessed with. Ooh, Heartfire's great with this uh, little 1-1 Legionnaire we've got. How stupid is it to get the Scry here and a permanent buff on Legionnaire? It's probably dumb, but here we are. Find Honor the God Pharaoh. I like that draw. Cruelty that Legionnaire, two mana up to play a blocker. Oh, it's more removal? Wow, yeah, it's removal that also plays a blocker. That's disgusting. Well, that's pretty incredible for our opponents. Looking for any land here, hopefully, so we can play another spell. Nice. Uh, I guess playing specifically. Yeah, I should have held a white up. Uh, Lynx was a better play than Heartfire right now. That was... Not a good line. I will trade into the 1-1. One, one. So I'm not going to throw a heart fire at it. Trusted Pegasus. I enjoy that card a lot. Oh, Lord. That's terrible. It's an instant speed 4-4 four, four and they draw two. I guess we found our Heartfire target. But now there's so many cards ahead. They still have four cards in hand here. Blue-black is just... Blue-black and red in this format are the strongest colors by a lot, and it's because of the amass mechanic. It just makes so many cards in their deck, just insane two-for-ones. Like Callus Dismissal, bounce something, and I get a creature that's going to trade off later. 
Um, they have removal spells that amass as well, stuff like that. So we haven't seen as insane of an amount of two-for-ones from them, like off of their commons and stuff, but this bomb rare certainly made up for that. Kind of single-handedly what three-for-one does pretty bad. Uh, and there's another one. Jace, wielder of mysteries. Well, I guess today's draft has answered the age-old question that is dependent on the format. What would win, a streamlined synergistic deck or bomb rares? <laughs> the bomb rares are also from streamlined synergistic decks from our opponents. Uh, but generally, the player who has also played bomb rares is going to win, and that'll be our three losses. God Eternal Oketra into God Eternal Bonsu into Commence the End Game and Jace from our final opponent. And now our opponent is incredibly stable. They're drawing two cards a turn. Which means they win the top deck war basically no matter what. Not only that, uh, like not only are they naturally drawing to a turn, they're also drawing off of additional value plays like Elite Guard Mage. This game is firmly on lock and nothing in our deck is going to crack through this board state. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. That is going to be four and three for today's draft. Honestly, again, considering the way that we lost our losses, I think I've very good showing from our deck. I don't think a lot of decks would have won the three games that we lost, considering the quality of rares that exploded in our faces. Um, God Eternal Bontu was the least balmy of all the rares that we ran up against, but we were also mana screwed in that game, so there wasn't much we could do there. I think all in all, again, just a pretty great showing from the deck, even if it is kind of an average, kind of mediocre record at four and three, just slightly above technically average here but the stack did better than i thought again blue black and red are the big really powerful colors in the format because this format introduced the amass mechanic which is a very very powerful mechanic and there's tons of cards that give you two for ones like honor the god pharaoh with the amass mechanic and the amass mechanic is in blue black and red so you have to be really aggressive and really fast to pull off a boros kind of aggro deck and luckily for us we were in several games um, and we didn't run up into too many really good amass cards that can really uh, come ahead for the victory. So, yeah, it, it worked out better than I thought it would, honestly, at 4-3. and three, I thought this was more like a 2-3 just because it is one of the weaker archetypes. And we did a lot of pivoting and moving around in the draft pod, but I'm pretty happy with the deck we ended up with, even if it isn't the greatest record ever. So we get to grab our 1,400 gems and three packs, and that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below where I'm live every Wednesday. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always... Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.